This VizCast will look at two capacitors connected in series to a battery. Let's begin by interpreting the question. To answer this question, which is getting us to calculate some charge on each capacitor, and indeed the total charge drawn from the battery, and the energy that's stored on each of the capacitors, there's a few things we'll need to know. We'll need to know the relationship between some of the quantities we're given here, between charge, capacitance, voltage, and energy. We'll also need to know something about capacitors that are connected in series, as that's what we have in this problem. And we'll also need to know something about the energy that is stored in a capacitor that is charged up. So let's move on to the development stage of our solution. And we might begin by drawing a small diagram here of our circuit that's being involved. There's a battery there, and there's two capacitors attached to that battery in series, as shown. And we know we have 9.0 volts there. Let's call this one capacitor 1. Let's make it our 2 microfarad capacitor. And let's call this capacitor 2, which is our 5 microfarad capacitor. We know that capacitance by definition tells us about the charge per unit potential difference across the capacitor. So C equals Q divided by V. And we also know that the energy stored in the electric field inside the capacitor can be written as a half times the capacitance times the square of the potential difference across them, a half CV squared. And the other thing that might be useful here, because we have two capacitors joined in series, is to remember what the effective or total capacitance of those two capacitors is. We find that the reciprocal of the total capacitance is the sum of the reciprocals of each of the individual capacitors. Well, we only have two capacitors here, so it's just going to be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 equals 1 over C total. Now, Parts A and B of this problem are asking us about the uh, total charge drawn from the battery as well as the charge on each of the capacitors. So if we look at capacitor 1 here for a moment and we say that the charge that sits on that side of capacitor 1 must be the positive flow of charge, effective flow of positive charge that left the battery. And of course our capacitor remains uncharged in total it's a separation of charge when we, when we talk about the charge in a capacitor. So on this other side here, it must have a charge minus Q1. If we look at capacitor 2, which in our diagram here is connected to the negative side of the battery, it must have a charge in there minus Q2, we'll call it. And its opposite plate there must be plus Q2. But importantly, minus Q1 and plus Q2, you can see, are basically connected together. That's a single conductor, in a sense, that joins one plate of C1 to the other plate of C2. That charge, minus Q1, can only have come from having more negative charge there than the plate here on C2. So importantly, we can see that Q1 actually has to equal Q2. And that's a general property for capacitors in series, because the charge in between each of the capacitors can only come from a charge separation of an uncharged wire. So that must actually equal the total charge drawn from the battery. Let's start to do a calculation now in our evaluate step. As we've just mentioned, A and B are essentially asking us the same thing in this problem. So we can use our relationship here that Q equals CV. And I know the size of the capacitance for each of these, but I don't know the voltage drop across each one. I could maybe try to calculate that. But because, as it turns out, the total charge and the charge on each of these is the same, it's probably more useful just to think of these two capacitors as a single capacitor. What effect does that single effective capacitor have? And so I can calculate that. The total capacitance from C1 and C2 in series is simply going to be 1 over C1, which I'll write as 1 over 2, plus 1 over C2, which is 1 over 5. I'm working here in units of microfarads. I have to keep track of that, so I'll make sure I remember that. Um, adding two fractions, uh, well, just to remind you, let's put them over a common denominator, for example, 10, and a half is 5 tenths, 
plus a fifth and a fifth is two tenths so I'm left here with 7 over 10 is my reciprocal so my total capacitance here is 10 divided by 7 microfarads and that's the quantity I can use to find this charge the charge on each of the capacitors so my Q value here the charge on F equal C which is 10 divided by 7 times 10 to the minus 6 that's 10 sevenths of a microfarad times V and we know the effective capacitor here has 9 volts across it so times 9 and that gives me a value of 12.9 by 10 to the minus 6 coulombs which I might write because my quantities have only been given to two significant figures in the question I might write that as 13 micro coulombs so that's the charge on each of the capacitors and it's the total charge drawn from the battery moving my problem up a little here part C asked me to find the charge stored on each of these capacitors and so as we wrote in our development stage that's going to be a half the capacitance times the voltage squared and I'd need to know the voltage across each of the capacitors to figure out the energy stored on each of those uh, how would I do that? Well I know this relationship again between capacitance, charge and potential difference so I can rearrange that to say the potential across each capacitor must be equal to its charge divided by its capacitance and rather than calculate that seeing as the question didn't actually ask me for the for the voltage or the potential difference across each capacitor I can just combine that now into this um, expression here instead of V squared I can write Q over C squared and you can see the C out the front here will cancel with one of the 1 over C squareds and this will equal a half times Q squared over C and now I can essentially just put the values in there that I have from above so the energy stored on capacitor 1 will be a half times and the charge is the same on all of them and I'll leave it here in its unrounded form 12.9 by 10 to the minus 6 squared divided by the capacitance and capacitor 1 is 2 micro coulombs you can see I can do some fairly straightforward cancelling here of 1 lot of 10 to the minus 6 with one of these 10 to the minus 6 squareds either way when I put that into my calculator I can find it comes out to be 41.6 times 10 to the minus 6 joules which again I can round fairly nicely to be 42 micro joules and I can do something similar for the energy stored on capacitor 2 uh, I could write the same expression here but use C2's value 5 times 10 to the minus 6 on the denominator or I can see straightforwardly that the energy stored on capacitor 2 is just going to be uh, 2 fifths of the energy stored on capacitor 1 and that's actually a much easier calculation to do and if I do that it comes out to be 16.6 times 10 to the minus 6 joules or rounding to my two significant figures 17 microjoules the last thing I should do here is just do a quick check to assess whether that answer is consistent and makes sense one thing I can do is to say this must be the energy this 42 microjoules and this 17 microjoules if I add those together I get the total energy stored in the capacitors of the system but I should be able to check if that's the energy I get if I just do a half CV squared where this is the total capacitance now and that total capacitance we know has 9 volts across it so I have a half times what was the total capacitance it was uh, 10 sevenths of a microfarad and V squared here will be the 9 volt squared I know the total potential drop across the series combination of capacitors is 9 volts I haven't calculated what the drop across each individual capacitor is but I don't need to for this problem and if I do that calculation I wind up with a number that is 58 microjoules which within rounding actually agrees with my answer